Hello, Syngap Lab. My name is Michael Gralia, and this is episode 64 of Syngap 10, your 10-minute weekly briefing on everything you need to know about Syngap 1. As you can tell from the fact that I just started speaking fast, I'm going to try to keep this closer to 10 minutes today. I want to make sure you guys make time to listen to this because there's so much good stuff. I had a great conversation with a mom today, newly diagnosed mom, young kid, definitely had her act together. She's already being seen by two hospitals. She's working the system. She's taking care of her little one. I was really impressed. And, and she said, you know, do you have any advice for me? And I said, look, it's, it's like this. Do not hug your kid and close the doors and say, we're going to get through this, just you and me. I said, no matter how much you love these kids and how many superpowers you have, these kids are a lot of work. These kids are a lot of work. And what you've got to do right now while they're young and cute and manageable is throw the doors open and make sure every high school student within a three block radius of your house is babysat that kid. And everyone at your church and your work and everyone knows about your kid. And, and learns to love on your kid because you're going to need that community to support your child and to support you as your kid gets older and bigger and, and more complicated. And I firmly believe that, and that's why I lead with that. I, guess I give this advice to every parent, regardless of their context, regardless of their family status, regardless of their socioeconomic status. Whoever you've got in your world, bring them in. Help them understand Syngap. Help them understand your kid. Because you need all the help you can get raising these children, right? And that applies more broadly, right? As a community, we need to do that. We need to throw our doors open and tell the world about Syngap 1 and get people into the fray. And I want to commend Callie Worth. Callie is one. I've, Callie and I have been friends for years now. She spent a year on the board. She's an amazing mom. She continues to work hard with our study coordination. Callie, you know, I was like, everyone's on Twitter. You guys should get on Twitter. Callie gets on Twitter. Tweet, tweet, tweet. She's got thousands of followers. Callie's doing great out there. And then one of those um, tweets got the attention of, she also did a family video. So first she did a family video. Then she got on the Twitter. And then she, um, through Twitter, got connected with a, a genetic testing company who was like, hey, we'd, like, we'd love to tell your story and amplify it. And then she brought me in. And I was like, have you guys seen her video? And they're like, no, we haven't seen She has a video. They, what? They're like, this is amazing. And next thing you know, now she's an insider, which is a major publication. So a major publication here on the internet is, is now writing about Syngap 1. And it's all because Callie threw the doors open and is building her team and is telling everyone. And I, and I just want to encourage every single person to do whatever you can do <coughs> to tell your story and spread the word about Syngap 1 because we, you need your community to know it and, and we need the world to know it so the companies will continue to work on it. And I want to also mention the Tavillas have done an amazing job of this. The Tavillas of Sprint for Syngap fame. Um, Susan Tavilla, who's one of the sisters, there's a lot of Tavilla sisters, by the way. There's, Ernie's got, I don't, eight or nine, there's a lot of them. And Susan, it was like the queen fundraiser for Sprint for Syngap. So she's actually going to do a webinar on how, on how she pulled that off. And I think that's another great way of spreading awareness and telling the world is, is looking at how the Tavillas did it, how Callie did it, how this new mom's going to do it. Everybody does it differently. But the point is, what I'm encouraging you to do is spread the word and be vocal. And don't be like, oh, we just got to hide and I got to take care of my little one. It's not going to work. Bring your community in. Use this as a way to grow your community, not the other way around. And then come and tell us how you did it. Reminder, I talked about this last week. We're having a conference December 1st and 2nd in Nashville. If you can come, please come. The first will be science. The second will be um, family connection. Do one, do both, whatever. Um, links in the show notes. A couple of uh, drug news, drug company items I want to flag for you. 17 hours ago, it was, or just yesterday, I should say, it was announced that Ionis got orphan drug designation for um, ION, what's the drug name? ION 582. So that's just their internal you know, drug name. And ION 582 got um, rare pediatric designation and orphan drug designation from the FDA. And this is an ASO for um, Angelman syndrome. We're going to want an, an ASO. And a lot of our kids... Um, when doctors meet them, sometimes they're like they think Fragile X, sometimes they think Angelman before they find out they've got Syngap 1. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. But the point is, another drug company, Ionis, who may be working on Syngap 1, we, you know, we don't know yet, um, has, has gotten permission from the FDA to put needles in kids and, and put ASOs in their brains. So that's great. Ionis, keep it up. Get better at that. Get ready to do Syngap 1. I think this... You know, we all win as the industry moves forward. So congratulations to our friends in Angelman's and to Ionis. And then also I got an update from Praxis. I'm going to read to you guys at the end. 
I'm going to include the copy of their letter to me um, in the end. And it was a, it was a broad update to all their DE, developmental epileptic encephalopathy partners, but it, it bears reading and it is just helpful to track and understand the complexity of what's going on. So, and the good news there is their Syngap-1 program is on track. And despite all the other um, challenges that Praxis is having right now, they continue to remain committed uh, to Syngap-1. So wonderful news. That's great. Great job to, uh, yesterday. Virginie did this wonderful webinar on Citizen. They are now serving 10 different genetic uh, conditions. And Syngap-1 was the first. I, I'll keep saying that. And it was just a great overview of Citizen and how helpful it is and a reminder of how lucky we are to have it. So that webinar will be live soon. It'll, you know, the syngap.fun slash Virginie link will take you there. And if you haven't signed up for Citizen, my friends, today's the day. Sign up. Don't wait for that next doctor's appointment. Sign up, get verified, uh, get your $100 gift card for getting verified. And then, you know, if you see more doctors, they'll go and collect those records too. But it's never too early to sign up for Citizen. If you have a Syngap and you're not in Citizen in the U.S., you're missing out, please sign up. Probably Genetic. We also had a webinar with Probably Genetic uh, last week. Today's Tuesday, so that will be on Thursday or Friday last week. Wonderful webinar of Probably Genetic. Um, really explains the incredible program we're doing and the way we're getting we're reaching out and we're finding patients, right? We have had over 3,000 people take our Probably Genetic survey. That's huge. We've had over 3,000 people take that survey and we've identified a number of them as being probably Syngap. And now it was announced that uh, Mozzie, so I announced last week that Ambit Healthcare um, has, has set up a testing link for us that we can send people to. But now Mozzie has formally partnered with Probably Genetic and will be offering testing directly to people who hit as Probably Syngap through that program that we set up. So that's a huge win. Thank you very much to Yale, what Dr. Yale Weiss at Mozzie for uh, sponsoring that program with PG. And thank you, PG, for helping us find more patients. I cannot wait to actually identify Syngapian with this. So, so exciting. And it's programs, by the way, like Citizen and programs like Probably Genetic that are why companies like Ionis and Praxis will remain committed to Syngap-1 because they know that we're already beating the street looking for, looking for patients and preparing data. Do you see how it's all coming together? It's really exciting. It's really exciting. Keep it up. Everyone's got to everyone grab an oar and do your work and sign up for Citizen and help us raise some money so we can keep this great work up. Speaking of raising money, fundraisers. MDBR was this past weekend. Huge congratulations to Aaron and Peter, and I'm going to forget someone, and Callie who went and supported them, and uh, Sydney who went and supported them, and everybody else on the team. It was amazing. Great work. Caitlin who went and supported them, and then thank you to Dr. De Dr. Ben Prosser from our SAB, whose lab also works on Syngap for hosting an after party. Ben's uh, daughter, Lulu, has SCXBP1, and he works on that, so he's called Lulu's crew. It was just great. It was great. The photos were great. Everything was great. I'm really proud of that team, and you know, it's not too late to donate to their effort. Links in the show notes. We're also work, still fundraising for those two mice. So lots going on. All of this money is going to good use. Believe me, Pavel is uh, structuring grants like a madman in background, and I'm looking forward to some great press releases there. Um, I also mentioned all the events that are coming up in the, in the show notes, and I just want to read you this letter from Praxis to finish, by the way, for the first time probably ever, on time, as long as I read this quickly. So this is cool. Um, this is a letter I got last week, and it started Monday morning, June 6th. We published an 8K filing, that's a, like a SEC filing, involving multiple programs of Praxis Precision Medicine. One of those announcements pertained to the FDA's clinical hold of our recent IND for Praxis 222 and SCN2A, so we wanted to share context for it. So Praxis 222 is not us, and SCN2A is not us, but it's important to see how this stuff goes down. On May 22nd, the company received communication from FDA providing additional information on the clinical hold placed on the IND investigational new drug application for the study of Prax222, an ASO or antisense oligonucleotide for the treatment of patients with SCN2A gain of function mutations, right? That's important because we have, we all have a loss of function mutations. We're all missing one copy. Some patients that one copy over produces and therefore they're over hundred percent. That's a whole other disease. We don't have that problem that we know about. Um, so anyway, this is an ASO for SCN2A gain of function. The communication indicated that our IND could be cleared once we submitted additional documentation related to the preclinical non-human primate toxicology study that supports the proposed starting dose in the clinical study. What are they talking about? Well, they dosed non-human primates, so monkeys, 
and and they and they did the math on the monkeys to see how much was the appropriate dose to give to humans and the fda was like tell us more about that so basically it's great the fda was like wait not quite yet and everyone freaked out but it's like ah it's not a big deal actually we just need to better understand how you thought about this so we are requesting a type a meeting with the fda to confirm study design and further clarify requirements for dose escalation beyond the starting dose this will surely leave our scn 2 community with questions about the timing of our path forward while the protocol and the discussions being held with the FDA remain confidential, we will do our best to maintain transparency and responsiveness throughout the process. That's the right answer. That's the right answer, Praxis. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks for telling us what you're doing. Thanks for telling us what's going down. And and, and, it, and it's important that we as a Syngap community watch this closely because guess what, guys? That's going to be us in a couple of years. God willing. That's going to be us in a couple of years. Right? So you got you to gotta, you gotta watch this careful dance that goes on with the FDA and, and how the communication happens. This is, really, this is really fascinating to watch, knowing that it's our future. We continue to be fully committed to advancing Prax222 to clinical study. We also want to restate this news is specific to Prax222 without impact on Prax562. Now, remember last week in episode 63... I talked about Prax 562, and I just heard them talk about the Epilepsy Pipeline Conference. And Prax 562 was for SCN 2A, SCN 8A, and TSC. Wow, they're gonna, that's a big drug. In Monday's press release, we, we reiterated our focus on driving toward proof of concept for Prax 562. We'll provide further updates on 562 as we approach major milestones. So they're still, they're still working on 562, but it's coming. In addition, our other programs in PhD, PCDH19 and Syngap1 remain on track. And if you remember from previous episodes, we've talked about how they expect to have a candidate for Syngap1 early next year. So this is all big news. And then there's more on there about um, Prax114, which they got bad data on, and so they turned off that program. And that's what I talked about last week with the bad stock news. So takeaways here, you know, we're not done till we're done, right? Uh, and so there was there was a little slowdown with um, two 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 from the FDA. Five six two is still going. Oh nine zero, which is Syngap. Hang on, we're still working on it. And one one four, unfortunately, which which we were hoping would be a great success for them, they got bad data and it got turned off. So lots going on in Praxis, and um, we're just grateful that the the, the, the strong uh, science and business leaders there are working on Syngap one. And that's all I got for you, friends. So thanks for listening. Sorry that took a little longer than it should have. And remember, throw the doors open, build your team, tell everyone. We need to keep growing the Syngap community as large and as powerful as possible. And we need to support each other. Just get out there and be public. That's the way we're going to win this game. That's the way we're going to get people to help our kids. Hang in there.